Ladies and gentlemen, the long awaited, highly requested video on how to make your own yogurt at home. This is it. Let's do it. Hi there. Welcome to this channel. My name is Emily Wamboy and this is Emily Wamboy Busy at Home. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own yogurt at home. The reason why I started making my own yogurt, not because I take a lot of yogurt, I don't, but I have a baby and my baby was starting to win and I needed a simple recipe that I could whip up in just minutes and have lots of yogurt to last me maybe a week or two. Because then again, my baby isn't eating a lot of yogurt, right? So that's when I went to the internet and I tried to find the best recipe on how to make uh, your own yogurt at home. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to make this process as simple as possible. Okay, so you only need two ingredients to make this recipe. And the yogurt that comes at the end is delicious. When you start making your own yogurt, it's not going to be the same as some goat yogurt, I promise. So the ingredients that you need are milk. You're going to need a liter of milk. That's four cups of milk. And you also need some yogurt. So if you've been making yogurt at home and it's become, you know, something that you do on a regular basis, you can always leave just a bit of yogurt. Don't eat the whole, don't eat all of the yogurt just leave just a bit of yogurt to make the next batch okay but if you're starting from scratch you're going to need to go to the supermarket and get yourself some yogurt so this is a brand from uh, it's uh, it's a bio yogurt but you can essentially use any other kind of yogurt that you have so when you go to the supermarket make sure you buy yogurt that says live cultures on the ingredients Let's go to the ingredients list and read and if it says live cultures that means it's um, properties to to use in this process so here's the thing you need to remember making yogurt is a natural biological system <laughs> we're just trying to create the best possible circumstances and conditions to increase your yogurt, right? Okay, so you're just multiplying the life cultures that you have in this yogurt into this milk. Cool, good, great. So if your yogurt is cold, make sure to bring it to room temperature. Uh, for me, I have some warm water here and I'm just going to leave my yogurt to just go to, you know, come to room temperature because it was a bit cold. So your milk, okay, let's talk about that. To warm your milk, you're going to use the same pot that you're going to use to churn your yogurt thing. Churn your yogurt, that's the correct term. So this is a pressure cooker. So this pressure cooker, I use it to make this amount of yogurt because it's not a lot. The reason why you need a pressure cooker or you know, if you have one, do use it, but you can also use a sufuria. Uh, do use a pressure cooker because it keeps the heat inside and you need to keep a certain level of heat in your milk so that it can, the, the bacteria can multiply, okay? So that's why I'm going to heat my milk in this pot. And you also need its lid as well so that the, the hot air doesn't escape. Okay, so just put your milk in your pot. Place like my milk on a gas stove and just heat it up. So when you heat your milk, you're going to heat it up until it's just about to boil. And then you're going to take it from the stove and you're going to cool it down to 40, 46 degrees Celsius. That is a bit hotter than lukewarm. It's like when you place your finger in the in the milk it should be warm a bit hot but not scalding like you like it shouldn't be it shouldn't hurt your finger when you when you put it in there another thing is you need to continuously stir your pot as your milk is heating up 
okay because when milk heats up the bottom of the pot in a formingi like to sort of bubbles right but you because you want consistency you want a smooth yogurt you do not want those inconsistencies so continue stirring you also want to stir because you want to avoid you know that skin that forms at the top of the milk when you're boiling it you want to avoid that as well one of the reasons why i actually started making yogurt was because i was kind of concerned about my child's health you know when you have a your first baby and you're concerned that all the evil of this world is going to get this child it's going to just get her <laughs> and i wanted to give her something i i, I know, like you know you want to know the ingredients in your yogurt you know like all those times that we've had all those scandals about you know milk production in this country and you kind of fear you don't want to give that to your child you want to actually make something that you know, you actually know what you put in the ingredients and you can be sure that it's a good product right yeah so that's actually why i started um making my own yogurt but another thing with making your own yogurt is yogurt is actually a probiotic it promotes the good health of your gut that of yourself and your children so um you can also make this to eat yourself you know it's very yummy it has like this very like it, it's very very different from the yogurt that you get in the store it's very very different yeah so at this point like you'll start to see bubbles forming like if you're keen on your yogurt on your milk it's bubbles are starting to form and the milk is starting to have this you know you know that you know that very distinct smell of boiling milk yeah it's starting to have that but you need to be careful you do not want to boil this milk you just want to bring it up to temperature because then when you boil it, it it's going to come it's going to take a long time to come you know to cool down yeah and i think my yogurt is has come to temperature so i'm going to take it out of the water that aside and I have a bowl here that I'm going to mix my yogurt in I'm gonna stop stirring that for a bit so I want you want to take your yogurt so the reason why you want to make sure that your yogurt is at room temperature is because you're going to heat up your milk so you're going to cool down your milk to a certain temperature you don't want to cool it down further than that by adding you know very cold milk because then your yogurt won't churn properly yes so my yogurt is is has come to temp Ooh, something else i did not mention this yogurt needs to be plain yogurt do not use vanilla or flavored yogurt use plain yogurt because then if you do not want to uh, if you're going to use it in food nini it's not going to have a funny taste so all I need is a quarter of a cup of milk. So that's for one liter of milk, you need a quarter of a cup. And what do you know? It's just about a quarter of a cup. Please keep an eye on your milk. I'm keeping an eye on, I'm keeping my eye on my milk. My milk has started to get like this. Come, come closer. Come, 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 come. Let me show you. So you can see Uku. Kando, can you see like these two bubbles? You can see like it's forming bubbles, right? That's where you need your milk to be. So at that point, you see it's not boiling yet, right? It's not boiling. At this point, you turn off your gas. And if you're in so much of a hurry, you can actually get a bigger bowl and place your place some very, some cold water in the bowl and just dunk this whole pot in there it's going to cool faster but keep stirring it until it comes down to temperature here i have a bowl with cold water just regular water in this very fancy bowl <laughs> your bowl doesn't have to be this fancy i promise this just belong to my mom it's very very pretty 
okay so it just has cold water again you need to stir it but don't be too vigorous like me because the, you know these bubbles are just, too, are just going to go into the yogurt so just gently stir it gently stir your milk okay and wait for it to cool so let me show you this i got it second hand uh, it's a candy thermometer in in the kitchen we have different kinds of thermometers this is a candy thermometer it's actually the one i use just continue stirring and stirring and stirring and please have clean hands because you're going to test be testing your milk yeah still hot let me make sure i think it's thicker So it's still hot, but it's not scalding. Okay. So the reason why you don't want it scalding is because these are living cultures, they are live cultures. So you do not want to kill them. So what you're going to do is that you're going to take just a bit of milk and put it in the yogurt. So this is partly to bring it to closer to the temperature of the milk, to bring the yogurt closer to the temperature of the milk. But then also, you want to loosen it up because you see, like you want you want it to be to you know become smoother, easier to mix into the milk. So you just stir it until you have no more lumps. almost smooth and you know you don't have to measure the amount of milk that you're putting into the yogurt it just needs to be maybe like another quarter cup but you don't need to measure you can just eyeball it it's fine it's okay great so now you see this is like smooth so now when we mix it into the, into the milk, it won't like, it won't have like all these bubbles. So now you pour this, the mixture into your milk and do this a bit fast because you also don't want the milk to cool down any further than it is right now. So once you've stirred it and everything is mixed in, you're good. Now all you have to do is just cover, cover it with a lid. If you're using a pressure cooker, cover it with the lid. And now what we're going to do is very, very simply, we're going to put this into your oven. The oven has a way of shutting in whatever temperature is in there, <laughs> right? Yeah, you can say it that way. Just kind of contains the temperature. So that's why it's good to just put it in the oven so if you're going to put it in the oven just put the light on so that helps to keep the the oven conditions constant and you're going to leave this in there for a minimum of four hours a maximum of 24 hours depending on how how tangy what they're tangy ya kiswailini in french we say kogagata kogagata Depending on how much kuganda you want it to be, or in French, kugagata you want it to be, or how sour you want it to be, or how tangy you want it to be. You get the point? So I'm going to put this in the oven overnight, but for you, that's in just a second. I'm back, and the yogurt is ready. So this is how your yogurt should look. So when you tilt it, it should be a bit firm. You see like the way, you see how thick the, the yogurt has become? That's what you want to see, okay? So for this next step, here are the things you're going to need. You're going to need a spoon for scooping. You're also going to need a jar that you're going to store your yogurt in. Make sure it's refrigerator safe. And then you're also going to need this. So if you're going to make a, your yogurt a bit thicker, you want to make sure that you strain your yogurt, okay? Because, let me show you, let's start this and I'll show you why we need, we need to start. So you see, 
this is a bit loose so if you like your yogurt like this well and good just stir it and serve however if you're like me and you like your yogurt a bit thicker you need to strain it so you'll need a bowl to catch the excess water or whey you need a sieve and then you also need this this is a handkerchief that i use specifically for yogurt making or for straining foods so it's just for the kitchen so if you're going to be making yogurt just buy a handkerchief uh, and you can just be using it to strain stuff so this is what you're going to need so let me just pour your yogurt so depending on how thick you want your yogurt to be you're going to live in this this uh, yogurt to strain for between i don't know a few minutes to a few hours depending on how thick you like it i don't like it so thick so just a few minutes will be fine so you can even store this in the fridge just the way it is just cover it either with a cling film on top or just fold the, the handkerchief on top of the yogurt but let me show you what's happening so see that's excess water this is called whey and i don't know anything that you can do with it but i just throw it away but yeah that's the excess water that you don't in your yogurt so let's wait the yogurt is done it's thickened so it's gotten a bit thicker than what it was so now i'm going to put it into our jar so just have in mind that when you put it in the fridge, it'll get a bit thicker. So go just a little less thicker than you would like it. So this is perfect for the whole family, especially for children. So actually at this point, you can flavor this however you like. You can add strawberries, you can add vanilla, you can add sugar if you like. Mm. So that's the clear water that you get. Drinkable, eatable. So I still have a bit of lumps in there, but if you want it like really, really smooth, just use a whisk. I don't mind it as is. I don't mind it. Mmm. So thank you so much for making this yogurt with me. Please make it at home and let me know how it turns out. I really want to see all those pictures. So if you like this kind of content, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. We make lots of videos on how to make amazing food for our families and our friends. And also share this video with someone who you think might like it. Bye!